Why is it that there's so much excess space when it comes to freight vessels? The industry is very fragmented. It's very old school. It's dominated by a few large players. And then there's been incumbent smaller players that have come into the market trying to address this big opportunity size of $8 trillion. So you have this aggressive long tail end of small players with large dominant players on the left side of the scale. They do not speak to one another, but this creates overcapacity in the industry. And given demand also being so disjointed and not knowing where to place their requests, it's created more fragmentation as any industry. You're using smart algorithms and machine learning to solve that problem. How exactly does your technology work? The algorithm first matches the volumetric space, the cubic metrage of a space on a truck, train or plane and tries to match that to the volumetric space of the cargo. So then we went further and said, well, what's the capacity match? So that means the density and the weight. And then the third step was, well, what are the locations? And by doing that three-dimensional potential match, you find better potential matches. It doesn't mean it's a perfect match, but it's better intelligence than what the market had before. And because we're independent and the technology is not owned by any one freight forwarder or cargo owner or operator or commodity trader, we're able to aggregate mass data from supply side and from demand side. And by doing that, finding possible matches across parties, um, which wouldn't happen before. So it's like the shared economy almost on steroids. So it's a suggested match. How does it learn over time? How does it improve its decision-making process? What kind of information does it use to do that? We match the algorithm to a route. So it's a very systematic approach to say, all right, on this one particular route, there's one particular type of cargo or commodity that's moving. This was the past matches that we found. These matches were possible matches, but not perfect matches. What made it a perfect match, i.e. when did someone accept it? So when, it come, when there's a match and an acceptance, you know, like dating and you know, the match, but doesn't mean that you're going to marry the person, but there's an actual successful conversion, you start also matchmaking based on the type of trader and the type of um, capacity provider. Um, and that gets smarter and smarter. And then you start taking the variances and making it even slimmer and you apply more mathematical analysis to it, but it's a very systematic approach. So what kind of cost savings are freight customers realizing? Approximately 23% per consignment. And that's significant. If you think about um, any type of company that's trying to be competitive in the market and where their competitive advantage is based purely on margins. And we're not talking you know, Louis Vuitton versus um, H&M, you know, we're talking a copper trade versus an iron ore trade. You know, the only difference between where you're mining a product on the mine and where you're selling it on the market or where it's being used, that differential between the operating cost of producing that ton and where it's being acquired is transport cost. So I always say that the biggest commodity traders in the world that are multi-billion, trillion dollar companies at, at, and in some countries, they actually just glorify transport brokers. For them to save 23% per tonne, I mean, that's significant. And that has knock-on effects to everything that gets produced from those products. So you think lithium, batteries, iPhones, you know? So it has a very far-reaching secondary impact going back to the mine or the farm and getting that product to market cheaper as an input cost to absolutely anything that every single one of us enjoy and use and consume. Shipping goods across long distances and into many countries, there's a lot of risk involved and uh, you have to look at insurance. How do you go about tackling that and ensuring that it's uh, uh, safe, secure and covered? Yeah, so a very good question. And that's why we actually created a software called SureFox, Insure on the Freight Open Exchange. And that is also uses intuitive risk calculators or algorithms. And what it basically does, it, it calculates the distance that the cargo is going to travel. It takes the mode of transport that it's using to, to transport the goods. And then also to the packaging type that's being used. And then obviously the commodity type, whether it's, you know, um, people want to steal it, like copper, for example. 
Um, and then lastly, the value. So it uses those different dimensions to come up with a risk factor. And that risk factor is then applied to a schedule that's a, given by an underwriter. And that underwriting schedule is negotiated depending on the historic claims history. So whenever cargo moves, we know it's covered. And it's covered in a way that it only reflects its a precise risk. 